right, I will start. So first of all, um, I just, hello everyone. Oh, they're coming in. Here's from Florida. I'll wait. All right. So welcome to the home stretch, everybody. Um, this is the final week. Um, my name is Lou Burl, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I'm so excited to welcome you to this final week before you decide to all come to St. Andrews. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm really excited to introduce um, five incredible SAS parents who come from different locations and experiences and are ready to share their SAS experiences with you and answer questions that you have before they introduce themselves. Um, I thought I'd introduce myself quickly. I do know many of you from interviewing, um, but for the rest, I actually grew up at St. Andrews and I was a, um, in the class of 1984, so a couple years ago. Um, and I started rowing here in 10th grade, um, which changed the trajectory of my life. And I spent most of my adult life raising three daughters and all St. Andreans and coaching collegiate rowing. Um, and about six years ago, um, they were looking to revamp their girls crew program and I was hired. And so I moved here from Massachusetts. Um, I do admissions, I run a 10th grade girls dorm and I do leadership work with the 11th grade. Uh, in fact, we will be um, doing speeches for our co-presidencies for next year, this coming Friday night. So things are, are moving quickly. Oh, I have to admit somebody. All right. Um, yeah, so my oldest daughter came here as a boarder. So I have been in your position before and my two others followed. Um, so I'm not gonna talk anymore. I'm gonna pass this over to our amazing parents. Um, um, Liz, why don't you start with the introductions? She's on mute. Liz, you're muted. Liz, Liz you're, you're on mute. Start over. Hi, um, good morning. I'm in Singapore. I'm Liz Butcher. I'm class of 1988. Um, but we actually applied to St. Andrews from Wellesley, Massachusetts, which is where we lived for about 20 years before relocating during our kids' um, time at St. Andrews. Um, what else? I have two kids there. Kate is a senior. Ben is a junior. And they've had a phenomenal experience. Um, I think one interesting thing that happened was Sophomore year, Kate had a surprise hip surgery, which um, took her out of school for about six weeks and she couldn't have made it through the return to school and just um, getting back to life as normal, really without the support of um, all of the teachers and her coach, her crew coach Lou and Annette in the health center. And I think um, that really showed us what the St. Andrews community was all about and um, happy ending. Kate did get back on the water as a rower and is going to be rowing in college. So I think once again, the smallness of St. Andrews and the support there was really phenomenal in, in her particular case. And our son, Ben, um, just hit the ground running and has loved it ever since he got there. He's a really um, thoughtful kid and he does things like puts together paddle tennis brackets for his class when they need something to do on the weekend. So he's been thriving as well. Um, and we've been really happy there. So that's our story. Ayana, you wanna go? Yes, I will go. Hello everyone. My name is Ayana Bryant. I am in New York City. I reside in the Bronx. Um, I have a son, Amari Bryant. He is actually a junior. He's in 11th grade. And I actually had to speak to him today to find out what is a great moment for him um, in terms of just being at St. Andrews. And one of the things he told me is that playing lacrosse, this is his first time he's been exposed to lacrosse. He's never played any sport before going to St. Andrews. And so the highlight for him was actually scoring in a game. And so knowing the type of person, he, he was very shy when it came to sports. He wasn't confident in that area. And that's one of the things that I think St. Andrew gave him, you know, the confidence you do well, you don't do well, it's okay, just try. And so for him, that's a great stride. Um, so that is definitely a special moment for my son at St. Andrews. Excellent. Jump in there, everybody. Um, I'm Amy Atkinson. I'm out in San Francisco and uh, we have a son, William, who is in the fifth form and um, could not be happier. Um, 
we were looking for a school that would where where William would be embraced as a as a young person and um, a place of inspiration. And I would say all of those things have been true at St. Andrews and he's happy and we're happy as a family and feel very lucky. Great. Elias? I'll go next. Uh, I'm Elias Corpus. Uh, we live in nearby New York, uh, Delaware. Originally, I'm from Europe, and so is my wife. So we didn't go. We're not uh, St. Andrews uh, graduates, but uh, we have currently a sophomore. My, my son, Jason, is, uh, is a sophomore, finishing the sophomore year at St. Andrews, but also my daughter, Katerina, she graduated from uh, St. Andrews uh, last summer, and she's currently in first year in, uh, in college. Uh, th there are a lot of favorite moments because uh, my kids did all different sports. So between them, they, they did like three different sports each. So all the meets, all, all the games, uh, but the most uh, satisfying from a parent is to see them try and challenge themselves in things that they weren't good. Uh, my daughter, for example, came as she was always a dancer in uh, classical ballet, but she ended up uh, four years in varsity swim team and in crew with uh, Lou, and they had great success. I remember a lot of regattas uh, competing with high schools across the nation, some of the top high schools. Uh, my son on the basketball team now. Uh, and also the interaction with, uh, with the students themselves. We're, we're lucky we're local. So occasionally we host international students during the holidays. So that's been one of the most satisfying experiences we've had. Hello, uh, Aaron Barnes. I live in Philadelphia, which is not too far from Middletown. My son's Luke and Satchel are St. Andrews students. Luke is a senior, Satchel's a freshman. Uh, they actually split, split time growing up between Sri Lanka where their mom lives and here in Philadelphia. So we're sort of a local family and an international family at the same time. Um, I did not have a background with uh, you know, private school, boarding school. I grew up outside New York City, public school kid and, and proud of it. But um, I have, have not been, couldn't be more pleased about St. Andrews and I tell people all the time that I don't think there's anything that I'll ever be able to give my children that costs money that is gonna mean more to them than the time they've spent at St. Andrews. Uh, it is a phenomenal school with phenomenal values. Um, I have to say, you know, great moments for my, for my son, Luke, who's the senior. I'll never forget when he was a sophomore, second semester, we were driving and he just said to me, dad, I, I don't think I could have gone to school anywhere else where I'd have this much diversity in terms of my classmates. And he meant racially, social, economically, you know, nationality. And, and he realized that, you know, how unique that was. Um, you know, my freshman, he's still finding his feet, but, um, you know, of the four of us, when we first visited St. Andrews on that first day, he was the one who loved it first. And in fact, when his older brother got in, um, his first reaction was, man, he's going to my school. And, 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 you know, three years later, he's now joining his brother. So it's a fantastic experience. And I, I highly recommend uh, St. Andrews to anyone because it's, it's just a fantastic place. Wonderful. Okay. So here's how we're going to do this. Um, you guys can put um, questions in the, I think there's a chat and um, actually there are, there's already a question um, that came to me. Um, but if you guys have specific questions for, it could be to a specific person um, or you could put it in and read it out loud. So we'll start with that. Um, go ahead and put, think of some questions that you wanna ask these guys. Um, but the one that I see here was, what was the adjustment like at home for you and at school for your child when you're going to St. Andrews? So I can speak to that. So I had to write a lot of things down. Um, so for me, the adjustment was really smooth and I'll just go back to actually applying to St. Andrews. Um, my son Amari was accepted to some really um, elite schools in New York City, Catholic schools, and then boarding schools. And so he was stuck between two boarding schools. We were able to go to the accepted students day 
and I went to several, but when I went to St. Andrews and just to see the parents and everyone just talking, feeling the energy, and I didn't really understand that before. Someone said, you will understand what school is right for your child when you feel that energy. And so feeling that energy in, um, we were, we weren't in a library, went in an um, art gallery um, and just feeling that energy. It was just so positive. And at that time, one of the great things St. Andrew did is that they, at the time, I was able to speak to a parent. So a parent called me, um, I spoke to the child and they just gave me their perspective on the school and they answered questions for me. The other thing that was really unique is that they looked at my child's profile and they saw that Amari went to a particular school in New York City and they actually had a student that went to that same school. And so when I went back on the um, Accepted Students Day, he actually gave Amari a tour around the school and it was, it just clicked, everything just matched. And so um, for me, that was like, I felt like I was putting it into great hands, my child. The other thing is Amari had a mentor, upperclassman that he can go to. He had um, the dorm parent, he had his advisor. The first semester, the, grade, the, um, the grades were pass fail. So it gave him time to adjust to the academics. Um, it's so I have a whole list of different things that St. Andrew did to make the adjustment easy for me. I know that the parents, they had parent weekend, grandparents weekend. Um, they had a bus from St. Andrews to New York City. I would go to 86th Street to pick them up. So I always felt connected. I would go to his games if I had time, you know, between my work schedule. So I just, we had weekly emails we got on Fridays, letting us know what pictures, everything that's going on at the school. Um, so I think that communication was really powerful to make me feel comfortable, my child being on um, the campus. Great, thank you. Um, all right. Um, Here's one. Um, how did you um, or, your or your child make the decision to say yes to SAS? When and how did you know? So I'll go with that because uh, the process that I followed was a little bit different. So as I said, uh, I grew up in, uh, in Europe. I grew up in Greece. I came here as an undergrad in the US as a student athlete. Uh, my wife was also from Europe, from Cyprus. She came as a graduate student. So in our respective countries, we didn't have, we both went to public school and we didn't have boarding schools where we grew up. Now, being uh, in the US and we spend a lot of time in, uh, in academia, we're both actually currently uh, professors in higher education. So we know about boarding schools. It wasn't like we didn't know the concept. Uh, and living in Delaware right now, uh, we, we knew, I mean, St. Andrews has uh, a, a, a national reputation. You knew, we knew about the academics and Delaware is so small. We had met family and faculty from St. Andrews. So we're very, very comfortable with the people and the academics, but uh, we weren't comfortable with the psychological of leaving your kid to go to boarding school. So for us, the idea of applying to boarding school was totally for. Uh, I didn't want to because I said, well, I left home when I was 18 and certainly I was going to let my own kids go wherever they want. It's not like I want them close to me. I mean, they can decide where they go to college, but I, I couldn't deal with the concept. I thought like I'm going to miss four years of being a parent. And this relationship and this bonding with my kids why should I let my kid these four years that that's our time, family to go to a boarding school? So we visited actually before we applied uh, and actually Lou would uh, remember that meeting. I was very, very hesitant and I was very honest. I said, I, I don't understand. I'm struggling with this idea of, of even applying. And eventually we applied and during the uh, visit back day, currently what we have now, back then obviously we didn't have COVID. Uh, that was five years ago when my daughter started. And on the visit back day, she pretty much, we had decided she was gonna go to day school, but we came with an open mind. Uh, and I started looking at things that 
other parents probably don't look. I knew about the academics. Uh, I knew about the people. I knew about the culture. But I started looking at students. I looked for diversity. Uh, I saw a lot of things. Uh, the students supporting each other, being happy, feeding off each other in the meetings that they had and in the presentations. At the end of the day, I remember I was waiting for Katerina, our daughter, with, uh, with uh, my wife and I turned to my wife and I said, you know something, if I was making a decision right now, I, I would come here. But we didn't say, because we didn't want to influence our daughter. And I think it was the next day that uh, Katerina came, our daughter said like, uh, I know it may come as a surprise. I think I'm going to be homesick for the first two, three weeks, but I think I'm going to like it there. Uh, and I, I want to go to St. Andrews. Uh, and we said, are you sure that this is what you want? They said, yeah, I think I'm going to try. And to make a long story short, she was never homesick. I remember the first uh, time I saw her coming back from St. Andrews a few weeks later. It's like she was telling us she was all excited. Um, and we turned around. I mean, uh, I've, we've been a St. Andrews family. Well, you, you know, we're lucky that we can go to a lot of the sports meets since we're local. Uh, we have met, the people are amazing. It's a very supportive school. Uh, the academics are top notch, but the preparation being, especially being in academia as a professor, both uh, my wife and I, the, the mental and emotional uh, preparation uh, is amazing. I really believe St. Andrews is the best school in the world. And, you know, I'm not saying as a marketing uh, term or a marketing statement. Uh, it, it, it's a different, it's the culture and the support of the students academically and also during the extracurricular activities has been amazing. Uh, my son was a totally different story. So different, uh, you know, I, I, I believe, I mean, you know, I want to believe they share a lot of the same values with my daughter. Uh, but they had totally different interests. They're totally different personalities. And even when he applied, obviously, we had the experience with my daughter by that time. We're very, very comfortable. For him, there was no other school. Uh, he wanted to go to St. Andrews. He knew he wanted to be at St. Andrews. He didn't want to look or, or even consider any other school. But the bottom line is your, your daughter or son is going to be probably totally different than everybody else at St. Andrews. They're going to have their own personalities. But the whole culture and support of St. Andrews, it really lets the people flourish and, and succeed and finding their own interests and growing within this environment. I can, I can honestly say now in retrospect, the fear that I had about the relationship with my kids and the bond and the family bond, I can say I have a stronger relationship now as a parent with both of my kids because of St. Andrews. So not only, I know some of you may be hesitant about the transition, not only uh, it wasn't like, it didn't get any weaker, but I really believe I have a much stronger, we have a much stronger relationship with both our uh, kids at St. Andrews. Thank you, Elias. Um, and a couple of people have asked, you guys can see the in the chat, it says, did anyone have a child who was anxious about being away from home? What was your experience of how St. Andrews helped your child adapt? And then Julia added that, um, how do you handle homesicknesses? This, I'm gonna just add in here really quickly from the, from the inside. Um, I was stunned when I became a faculty member here six years ago to see what a well-oiled machine is the first three weeks of school. It is so well planned and thought out and we really don't deal with much homesickness. We keep them very busy and, and, and that's completely intentional, um, but that's my experience. Now other parents might have dealt with some homesickness if you wanna, if anyone wants to address that. Uh, we were uh, sending our child William home uh, here from San Francisco and um, we were a little bit worried about homesickness and we, when we when we said goodbye to him you know you could see a little tear in his eye and you know i was trying to let, let tears go in my eye. the minute i got in the car of course was weeping um 
Um, but what Lou just said, I mean, he went to a, that first night they had a, I think a square dance and um, a cookout and um, he got to know his friends. And um, I just like to, what, what Elias was just saying about deciding um, between schools and we had a difficult decision between two different boarding schools, one that my older daughter had gone to and one that my, our son William thought that he wanted to go to. Um, and we went back and we revisited the two schools and um, and we had this strange moment where where he, he thought that he wanted to go to this one school before he did the revisits and um, and then and we thought he was going to go to that other school and after revisiting both schools um, he had this sort of I don't know this question mark and so we really tried to talk to him about that and what is it that you're feeling and why and he said well you know at St Andrews the headmaster wrote me. And the senior um, wrote me, and when I came, everybody knew my name. And um, and you know, I really what I said a little bit earlier. I really felt embraced there, and um, and we really had to listen to that um, as parents. And he actually ended up coming back to his day school here in San Francisco, and he had been asked to give a chapel talk in the middle of this whole, you know, all of the all of the eighth graders gave a chapel talk. And he got up and gave this chapel talk at his boys' school in San Francisco about, I thought I wanted to go to this one school and now I'm not sure. And um, I don't know, so I was just saying back to the earlier question, listen to your child and, and what, what they think. And, I, and finally, I'll just say that that personal attention that William was given on the revisit day that, and that intentionality, I can say as a parent, um, that has, that has translated through um, the following three years of his life. It's a very intentional place, um, a very kind place. Uh, it's a place of inspiration, not strategy. And I, I've, we're, we're thrilled to have our son there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add as well, if I can add one thing on, on the homesickness, we're worried about that and it didn't happen. And obviously the faculty, uh, they do a great job but it's also the students themselves, the upperclassmen that take the initiative and the leadership to really engage and welcome everybody in the community. So they don't feel it's an immediate connection during the first days with a square dance and other activities uh, that they don't really get to miss home as much as we think they're gonna miss home. Great, good. All right, other questions. Um... Does anyone have a question about distance, like how far away you're living? I know um, Liz Butcher here is, you know, her, sent her kids from Wellesley, Massachusetts to begin with and now is far away in Singapore. Um, all right, let's see. How do students stay engaged and invested in their senior year in such a small community? Parents can answer that. If you, are, if you don't know, then I'm happy to chime in, but go ahead, Any, anyone who hasn't talked? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'll just say that, you know, there's not this sort of checkout culture. Um, you know, the, the students are, are very invested in their entire experience at St. Andrews. I think the school does a great job during the second semester of senior year, maybe changing the emphasis a bit where, where the, the, the academics come about passion sub passion subject for the professors and but they're, they're truly engaged it's not like they're walking around you know hanging out by the pond all day but you know one of the interesting things about St. Andrews and and you sort of start to notice it as your child maybe gets to be a sophomore or a junior is that when you're walking around that place as a, as a parent you never see seniors wearing the sweatshirt of the college they got into they barely talk about it. You know, my son Luke doesn't know where a lot of his friends are going to college. It's not top of mind. It's part of the process. And it's part of what St. Andrews helps you to go do. But these kids don't seem to me to be waiting to get out. You know, they, they wanna have the full experience, the full four years, and then what comes next comes next. That's great. Thank you. And that's, and that's again, back to intentionality. They don't ask each other. It's, um, they'll say, yep, I've decided I'm going to go ED here or, or they don't, but they don't mention the school. So it's, it, it helps us um, 
avoid that head to head competition. And um, it's a it's a very private and respected process. Um, okay. For, let's see, let's see. For a ninth grade student, I understand that other than the arts, most of the courses are year long and mandatory. Am I right? Um, for the ninth graders, most of the classes are um, history, biology, um, your language, English and math. Um, and you're, you'll be placed in different levels of, of math and languages. But um, those are um, mandatory. And so you're not gonna get into the really, really exciting uh, 10th, 11th and 12th grade. You can start taking those semester long classes and um, whether it's astrophysics or nuclear ethics or you know the history of hate and uh, about uh, just, there's so many incredible semester long classes. Uh, you can't list them all. Um, okay, jumping around. Um, Charlie, I missed yours at the beginning. Do you anticipate the COVID policies to be relaxed by September, penalty points, parental visitation? I have no idea. I um, That will come from the administration and head of school. Um, but I do know that the school has just announced yesterday that we will be uh, vaccine, vaccinating all of the students 16 years of age and older here on campus. And the first one will come in a couple of weeks um, in April and the second one will come um, in May. So that's really exciting. Our health center is, they're amazing. They are so proactive and so supportive and helpful and um, really communicative with the whole school and the state of Delaware on um, public health. Okay. What are some more questions here? Um, and, and Lou, I'll, I'll just I'll just uh, add to that just the sense that you've got uh, uh, Catherine in this case uh, suddenly <laughs> seeing a very rules based organization, and so I know COVID just you know puts a huge clamp down in terms of saying you can't do this, you can't do that, you know, and uh, suddenly the freedom of movement or just uh, the sense of freedom goes away, and I. I'm not worried about it, but you know, as a 14 year old, she is. So yeah. I know, I know you're, I know you're constrained by the situation and having to wait until the fall, but there's every indication that 12 to 15 year olds are going to be able to be vaccinated over the next five months. I, I guess the sense is, I know the school is conservative in terms of how it's been treating this health emergency, but do you feel like uh, the school will be brave um, as this country comes out of it in the, in the fall, presumably? I mean, yeah, you, I mean, are you, are you, are you going to be ultra, ultra conservative and say, no, it's, you know, no, we're going to, we're going to wait another year before we really feel safe. Or do you, are you going to be proactive? Do you think just how you see, you know, I, today? I would love to tell you that I'm part of the decision making. I am not. And we, with a yeah. new head, um, I, I don't know yet, but I do. Um, it doesn't feel rulesy here at all. Um, it, it doesn't, it feels very, it's free. It feels very free. Um, and kids are doing, I mean, they're, they're everywhere doing all kinds of things, um, you know, dancing and having, um, I don't know, birthday parties. And it's, it, we wear masks. That's the big thing. Um, but it's so beautiful out now that everyone's just eating outside most of the time. And um, it doesn't feel like a rules place. Like I forget that I have it on. Um, but so I don't know. And um, I'd love to be able to tell you more. And, I, and maybe you can ask that to Tad on Friday night. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's Sorry. Okay. No, no. Thank you. Hey, Lou, I want to jump in there for a second because I think in the fall, it did feel pretty restrictive to the kids when they first got back, especially because the way they let the classes back, they had two week interrooms between each class coming back. So long. they really didn't establish a bubble for six weeks. But with the spring, they all came back relatively within a few days. And now they have a great bubble. And that is the phenomenal thing about St. Andrews is, um, and there's so many ways in which this is true, but because it's all boarding, they've actually been much less porous than obviously day students, but also hybrid schools that have um, kids coming and going every day. So I think actually this spring, St. Andrews is showing really well versus peer schools in terms of the freedom the kids are having. All right. Um, the process for math and language placement. Do parents, do you remember what you went through? I think we, I think if I can recall, it's been a while, but I think Amari had to take some placement exam to see what math or I think it was the math, what class he was gonna be in. I can't remember, it was so long ago, but I do believe that's what happened. <laughs> 
Yeah. And, and it's, um, it, I think it's changed over the last year or so, but um, sometimes um, we do need to do an assessment for language and for, um, and for math, but we don't always do that. And, um, but it's very flexible when you get here, if there is, if you feel like this, you know, I had an advisee that came in a couple of years ago and she was put in French three um, and she came to me and she said, this feels really easy. And so she went and spoke to Madame who was in charge of the French department. And within a week she was in French five. And um, so that doesn't happen a whole lot where we misplace people, but um, they're, everyone's really flexible about, and it's easy to communicate um, with regard to that. But the math recommendations are really detailed. The teachers that filled them out um, were very specific as, as to what topics they would be covered by the end of the year. So our math department has a pretty good idea of how to segue the students and, um, and transition them into our math program. So what questions do you have? Any questions for our parents? Let's see what else we have in here. Typical weekend in February, the dead of winter. Um, can you give examples of how the students spend their weekends? I feel like these are great questions for students. Um, parents, do you want me to take this? Well, or do you want to? I, oh, I'll just ahead. jump in quick. I, you know, I don't, I don't know every weekend in the middle of February, but I know my, um, our, William went back in the, um, you know, for COVID just a few weeks ago and it was still a little chilly and like, what are you doing on the weekends with no food, no nothing? And he, and he, he and a friend, do you, anybody know the game Catan? There's a game, a board game called Catan. And he and some friends had started a Catan club do you know what what junior in high school is playing guitar? Anyway, it was I thought that was wonderful. Not that they do that all the time, but that's one anecdote. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I, I probably shouldn't say this, but one thing your kid will not be doing in the dead of winter in February is calling you. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the kids just they entertain each other. Uh, you know, between the, the beautiful two thousand acres, the beautiful sports facilities, you know, the gym, and and the various clubs that exist you know, they, they find things to do, obviously in a in non COVID time, they're also, you know, Johnson to Middletown, sometimes up to Christiana mall, but, but, you know, I don't, I don't get the sense that the students flee campus very much. And they, and they really just spend a lot of time together doing various things and decompressing and not calling their parents. <laughs> they love their downtime. But at the same time, there's a really, really active, I would say one of the most active clubs at St. Andrews is a group of students. And in fact, they are elected to be on this committee. It's called SWAG, which is the Student Weekend Activity Group. And it's a really big um, deal to be elected to it. They meet every Monday evening and they plan out activities for um, this, the whole school for the weekend. So by Wednesday, the, the faculty head of SWAG um, emails the entire school, all the different things they can sign up for. And, um, and there's, and because we haven't been able to go out to like, there's lots of good, there's a great Indian restaurant, there's sushi restaurants, there's all these different types of restaurants around here, but our kids can't go to them. So we've been having all different food trucks come on campus every weekend. And there's St. Andrew's versions of Survivor and um, the amazing race. And they, there's, um, there's all kinds of competitions. There's uh, spike ball is pretty big for those of you who have been on campus you've seen we totally have trashed the front lawn um, but there's the student weekend activity group is really active and um, I think is, Liz I think Ben is on it isn't yeah, it? Yeah Ben's in swag yeah. yeah so like ping pong tournaments and I love their ability to improvise and be creative and you know there are definitely pros and cons to being at a relatively remote school but I think one of the biggest pros is sort of what we've all discovered through the pandemic that we can make our own fun in ways that um, might not be readily apparent if you had a city right at your fingertips. So yeah, I, I don't think they're ever bored on weekends, at least that I've heard. No. Um, there are also a lot of uh, artistic things. I know a lot of uh, students who, are, who, who like music and to play instruments, they have little bands and the get togethers. So between arts, sports and all the clubs, the truth is, again, they don't want, I mean, we're local and they don't want to hear from us or come home or even visit and all that. But they have fun. So that's the hardest part that I deal with, with, with parents of my advisees and kids on my job. They're not returning my texts. I'm like, well, because they don't carry their phone around. 
Um, and that's a whole nother thing. But um, um, but we have a question here. How often do you check in with your kids and what uh, what way has worked best for you and them? I mean, I think you kind of feel your own way, right? I mean, when they, when they first get there, it's sort of a shock that you hear from them way less than you thought you would. And at some point, I think all of us have to articulate to them <laughs> that we need to hear from them, you know, once, twice a week. Um, you definitely hear from them if the, you know, the account's running low at the school store. Uh, but as they get older, you know, I think I've gotten to more, in, into more of a pattern with Luke, um, you know, with his younger brother, not so much yet. And his younger brother's more apt, at least right now, to, to maybe, you know, shoot a text. But as, as I'm sure everybody on the call knows, kids would prefer to text than call, or his parents would prefer to get the call than the text. But, you know, that's just the way it is. Yes, um, for my son, I tried to, when he first went to St. Andrews, I tried to come up with a plan of him calling me every week and that did not work. I was like, just check in at least once a week. It didn't work. And so um, as long as I knew he was safe, everything was good. I wasn't really concerned. He would check in when he wanted to, but he didn't check in that often. And plus he was adjusting to the structured environment. Um, whether it was his classes, not having his phone, um, having a sport, then his dinner, having study hall. So I had a small window when I was able to talk to him. Um, and sometimes that just didn't happen because he's like, I got to go take a shower. I got to get ready for the next day. So the environment was very structured also. Yeah, I'm going to echo the statements uh, by your parents. I don't get many calls so, or texts. Or when I text, try to, to have a conversation is how they good, you know, single words that come back. But uh, another important thing is as a parent, uh, I know my kids are safe there. It's a very inclusive and diverse environment. And that's very comforting as far as understanding. You know, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I know where my kids are. They're doing interesting things, they're enjoying being there. So, and it's very, very safe. Any other questions? If you want, you can just say them out loud. It's very exciting to hear your voices. Or topics that you're interested in. Okay, let's see. Um, Someone had sent me one. Um, what is faculty presence like? What's the faculty? Um, Elias spoke of the faculty support, but does anyone have a sense of faculty presence? Yeah, I, I guess this is a really interesting sort of philosophical point. I think it's easy to send your child to a place like St. Andrews and feel like, there you go, St. Andrews do the work, but as a parent, I feel as much a part of the community as, as my kids do in a different way. Uh, but I definitely do. I think we all do. Um, the, the best way to get the most out of St. Andrews as a, as a student is to make sure you leverage the resources you have from the faculty and your advisor. You know, to me, those relationships are invaluable. And sometimes it takes the students a little while to get that. But as a parent, I've also developed great relationships with my son's advisors and coaches and teachers and not in an overbearing helicopter parent sort of way. They're just interesting people. They're shepherding your child. They welcome your you know, engagement and input. And I've always found that to be you know, a very, very comforting part of this whole experience is that I don't feel like there's a wall between myself and this environment my kids are in. In fact, that's not what St. Andrews wants. St. Andrews wants the parents to be very engaged. That's great, that's excellent. Um, and on the relationship with, uh, with the faculty, I think it helps that it's a big advantage. Uh, at the beginning, I couldn't understand it, that it's 100% boarding. So all the kids are there. There's no separation between the, the day kid, you know, the day students and, and the boarders. And most of the faculty actually live on campus or nearby. So this, the, 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 the 
everyday interaction that there is the respect, but there is also the closeness with the advisors, with the teachers to really ask for help and really discuss things any time of the day uh, while on campus. So. That's great. Um, the question, um, Erica, I'm sorry you have allergies and I get to see you tomorrow. This is very exciting. I get to tour you. Um, but the, you can see the question, do students have an advisor for four years or many different mentors as advisors? Um, you can, you are assigned an advisor when you, um, the summer before you come. So this summer you'd receive a letter from, or the student would see, receive a letter from the big sibling, big brother, big sister, and also the student would receive a letter from an advisor, an email saying, tell me, you know, tell me all about yourself. And then the parents also get a separate email. And we really, really, it's very helpful as an advisor to get that information from parents, like what your concerns are, uh, what you've noticed this summer, any changes, um, what your goals are. Um, and then the student can stay with that advisor all four years if they'd like, or we also sort of, it's like, a, it's an egoless thing um, where if a student says, okay, I've had a great year with this advisor, I wanna move on to that advisor and just get to know, they really like to get to know faculty, which is kind of a cool thing. So I don't know if your kids have had the same advisor the whole time. I think it's Amy, Will, you mentioned Williams. Um, yeah, uh, our son William was, uh, so as much as you can have a real academic interest in, high, in middle school, which you know, William was interested in history. And um, again, I thought St. Andrews did a beautiful job of this. He wrote about that in his application. And so when he came to the school, um, they uh, paired him with Emily Pressman, who is head of the history department and who, um, as Aaron was just saying, we've, we've gotten to know as a person as well, just the loveliest human being. And um, you know, she's encouraged him not just, you know, a, as an academic advisor, but encouraged him as a person, invites him over for, you know, monkey bread. And, and, and um, you know, she's, she, again, I, I used the word embraced earlier. She, he, William really just felt embraced by that relationship. So um, he has stayed with Emily um, uh, all three years so far. And I'm, I can't imagine that he'll change. Um, and, you know, we've been so impressed. I'm sure all of all of the advisors are like this, but we've been so impressed by the written of written um, evaluations that we get with from from her with her grades. You know, so insightful and perceptive about who William is as a person, not just as a student. So, um, anyway, our experience with that has just been really spectacular. Okay, I mean, it, it's a great faculty. Uh, my my oldest son switched advisors after his freshman year because he had developed a very close relationship with uh, the gentleman who was his soccer coach and, and, and uh, Will Robinson and, and he and Will just had such a, such a bond that he switched his advisor to Will. I think my youngest son, I could see him staying with his advisor the, the entire four years. I'm of kind of two minds. I mean, I think getting to know as many faculty members as possible with some degree of depth, I think helps you get more out of St. Andrews, but you know, you develop connections with who you develop connections with and just because someone's not your advisor doesn't mean they're not someone you can go for to for advice. Exactly. And furthermore, knowing uh, from my daughter who's uh, first year in college, these relationships with the students, but also the, the faculty and the advisors that continue after you leave St. Andrews. Uh, you, you know, it's very often that you're gonna hear, I talk to, to this teacher or my advisor, and uh, we hear all the time now from my daughter who's in uh, college already. Uh, once you leave St. Andrews, you're all, once you're at St. Andrews, even if when you graduate, you're always part of the family, so. Awesome. Um, okay, for the panelists, how did you receive the news um, of change of head of school? What impact do you expect it will have on your child's experience at St. Andrews? Um, I'll, I'll start. First of all, Tad was at St. Andrews when I was at St. Andrews. He was um, an English teacher, soccer coach, and dean of students. And to just try and visualize St. Andrews, and Elizabeth was my um, field hockey coach and just an amazing dorm parent. And um, to visualize St. Andrews without them is definitely challenging. But I think that um, joy completely understands the school and the ethos, the fact that she attended St. Andrews but has been away doing um, incredible things is um, very heartening. And I think I don't 
know how the transition is going to go, but I can't imagine a better incoming head than Joy. I have to say that I, I we have been, um, I would personally was so inspired by um, by Tad Roach's writing, which I read a lot in, in during the admissions process. And so, um, and when, when uh, our son went to St. Andrews, um, we loved the fact that he had given his life to the school, that that was his life's work and um, that he and Elizabeth um, had, you know, sort of built a culture over time, and that had that had meaning to us as parents. And so I have to say, when we got him the the, the email that he was, we were like, oh no. Um, uh, um, but but what what Elizabeth was just saying, um, the fact that Joy not only went to St. Andrews, but I was listening to some uh, parent Zoom the other day. She she also taught at the school um, for eight years, and um, and I was a student of Chad Roach's, was in his English class, and. Um, and so I have to say that it's reassuring to me as a parent who um, loved Tad and Elizabeth Roach, but both, you know, whatever, for many reasons, um, that she knows the culture of the school and that she understands um, the ethos of it and that it's part of her own story, um, not just um, something that she's coming to and, and, and um, coming to, coming to, I mean, there's a lot of wonderful people in the world, but she, she really understands the culture of the school and I think will bring it my senses bring it forward. So that's reassuring to me. Anyone else want to add anything there? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like Amy, I mean, Tad was a huge reason that, you know, we felt comfortable sending our kid, our oldest son to St. Andrews in the first place. And Tad also ended up creating, having a great bond with our son, Luke, and, you know, one of his favorite teachers. But, you know, Tad built a legacy at St. Andrews, but there was, there are other people who built legacies and Tad has added to them and in a way that is, is, is substantial, but people have such reverence for the school and for the culture. And you have a lot of St. Andreans on the board and on the faculty and, you know, we're parents. So I think the culture of the school is secure. And, and I think Joy's going to do a great job and, you know, We'll, we'll go from there. Sometimes change, you know, change always has to happen. It's inevitable and, and it's often good. Good, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely bittersweet because they're amazing and um, it'll be, it's always sad to see amazing people leave, but um, this school is strong. And so as, as you said, so many of us uh, went here, know the school so well, and all of us are dedicated and committed to keeping St. Andrews at, at the level um, whether it's academically, athletically, socially, that it is. And we just, we want to keep it moving forward and, and becoming the best school in the world, as Aaron said earlier, I think. So other questions we're getting, we've been 50 minutes in. Um, Hi, Lou. It's Lisa Foster. Um, I'm just a very logistical, practical question. We're in California and I'm jealous of the parents who are close by so they can go watch their kids in the sports games. And um, so just for those who are out of town, uh, there's so many occasions it looks like to go back. Um, but where, like, where do people stay that's nearby? I mean, do people rent a little house and can you, can you come for a weekend and take your child and a friend or two and have them come with you stay somewhere close by, just practically, I'm trying to envision how to make this easy for me to, to be able to come back and forth. Yeah, uh, Liz, do you wanna? Yeah, so um, now Middletown has two hotels, right? They have, uh, I think there's a Holiday Inn and um, I don't know what the other one is, yeah, comparable. Yeah, um, but there's actually a cute little town called Chesapeake City that's about maybe a 25 minute drive and it's right along the Chesapeake River and they have lots of, um, not lots, they have a few cute bed and breakfasts and a couple down home restaurants. And um, so yeah, you can absolutely come and, you know, see games and take your kids out and um, it's fun. But, you know, I think your kids are so happy to see you. Oh, Hotel DuPont, yeah, up in Wilmington. And Wilmington has lots of nice stuff, mm -hmm. lots of nice hotels, and um, if you want to stay a little farther afield. But, right? Yeah, um, and then there's plenty of weekends where we don't have um, Saturday. Sometimes we have Saturday programming, whether it's a speaker or workshops. Um, we do, you know, whether it's environmental or um, 
DEI workshops, um, but sometimes they're just completely free and a parent can come in on a Friday and um, either meet their kids or go up to New York for the weekend or, um, but we don't have a set number of weekends kids can take. Um, to, back to some of somebody's point earlier, they really don't wanna leave. <laughs> they're here, they love their free weekends. And um, when we're living without COVID, we actually have a very long weekend um, each, season. So in the fall, the kids leave at noon on Friday and they don't have to be back until study hall on Tuesday night. And we do that again in the winter and also in the spring. So trust me when I say that, that we are local. So we're 25 minutes away. They don't want to, you know, they, they don't <laughs> want to come home. So usually the response is like, I'm busy. We have things to do. So they're trying to find any excuse because I mean, that's their environment. They're having fun. I mean, they want to enjoy being with their friends. So after a while you give up, but uh, we have the benefit of going to sports, dance and uh, activities, so. Great, that's helpful, thank you. Yes, but Lisa, you can swoop in and, and take her out and <laughs> definitely. Time to time, time right. to time, I'll bribe her. <laughs> I, I hope you like Chick-fil-A because you're, you're going, to, you're going to Chick-fil-A a lot. <laughs> Is that a guy thing? <laughs> I've never eaten more Chick Fil A in my life than you know, since my. Uh, uh, the biggest thing is they always want food. That's what they want. Take me mm. to get some food. Load up their um their their bins in their rooms. So, are there any other questions? Again, just turn on and um you can speak out loud if you'd like to ask a question or a f or tell us a fear and maybe we can alleviate anything. Um, you've heard it all. It's the nicest school in the world. It's probably more wholesome than any other boarding school you've ever heard of. Um, and um, and that's, you know, a reason as that I, as a parent was really um, okay with sending my daughter daughters away before I came here, <laughs> follow them. Yeah, I mean, I guess that, that's, a, that's a big point. I mean, I, you know, what, especially someone like myself who I had a certain you know, you know, perspective about what I thought boarding schools were like based on people I knew growing up and once I was an adult and working and, you know, drinking and drugs and this and that. St. Andrews is not like that. Just not. The opposite, I think, is the true. I see yeah. William's classmates from middle school here in San Francisco and some of the pressures that are on them through social media and, and all that. And I, the word wholesome, I think, is the right one, Lou. I mean, it's, I'm so grateful for for the no drug, no drinking culture at St. Andrews. And um, it's really wonderful. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, like, yeah. and, and it's also the difference because, you, you know, I didn't know about, I mean, I knew about boarding school, so I had a different perception. And your thing, after you experience, you say, well, boarding schools are not like this, but it's not only that boarding schools are not like this, St. Andrews is not like this. So St. Andrews is very, very unique. It's not like, other boarding schools, I can definitely say that. It's a unique culture that no matter how people can describe it, uh, only if you live it as a student, but also as a parent, you can really explain, you, you feel what it is, the culture, uh, it's different. It's so different, I would agree with that. Like my son, he's going into 12th grade and he was like, I want a school just like St. Andrews. So he wants a college the same as St. Andrews. And so we're looking into that to see what is the right fit for him because he wants to continue that. He wants that small culture, that connectedness to the staff and to his peers. And so, you know, obviously St. Andrews has made an impression on him. So, um, yeah, just adding to that a little bit, living um, up in New England, obviously we had no, no shortage of choices of boarding schools um, when we started looking for our 12th grader. And um, my husband and I both went to St. Andrews. So that was really the only school we knew. And so we thought, oh, well, we'll just find a St. Andrews that's like an hour, hour and a half from Wellesley will be great, you know. And it, suddenly we started looking at all these different schools and I'd say things like, oh, wait, so you don't have sit down dinners? What, but doesn't that really help bring the, bring the school together? Yeah, but you know, then the ice hockey teams can't practice or, um, hey, you've got this gorgeous chapel. How often do you have chapel? Well, we don't really use that. We kind of have meetings there because 
And I just, so it really became the, wait, this isn't St. Andrew's tour rather than, you know, oh, let's just find, you know, a St. Andrew's close to our house. So that was um, very eye-opening for us. And a large part of the reason we decided to send our kids um, out, of, out of New England back to Delaware for boarding school. So just an aside. And that St. Andrew's been able to hold on to that culture. I think that, um... You know, it's kind of back to the future, uh, sit down meals and those kinds of things. Do you know, I, I, it's, um, that, is, that, that was important to us as well. Believe it or not, we miss them. It's, it's the way we get to know each other. You know, you're at a, a ta one table for three weeks, two kids from each grade, and it's only four times a week. And it's, um, it's become lunches, but we're not doing it now. And you, we definitely, you know, I don't, I don't know most of the boys as well as I would have, um, but I, you know, I say quickly, pull, pull it down so I can see your face. Okay. All right. And so I, I cheat a little bit, um, but it's, it's, we, we do really miss that part of the school where everyone's squished in the dining hall. So I put my name, my email in the chat. If any of you want to follow up um, with any of us, if you guys want to add your, um, our fabulous parent panelists, um, if you want to add your email into the chat, that would be great. Um, maybe uh, one last question. Anybody have one that, that they were hoping to get answered tonight by our parents? I just had a quick question. Hi, Ms. Burl. I'm Grace Ann's mom, Charlotte. Hi. hi. Nice Let's to meet you, Charlotte. Hands. I can't do crew with you. I can't. Um, it's awesome. Anyway, I just wanted to ask, is there a way for people to connect with other locals? Like we're also in California. I know some of the other panelists or the other people are from California, but I'm wondering, is there a way for us to connect with other local people in our area before school starts? Oh, definitely. Definitely. We help people in different continents get together. So okay. yeah. as soon as we, have, we get through this process, we are happy to make connections for people. Super. Thank yes. you. Then you can get together for a picnic or something and just before you head across the, the country together. Very good. There's, Thank there's you. groups all over. Anything else? This is, I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, it's been good to see so many of you that I have either interviewed or have gotten to know through the process. Um, and feel free to keep reaching out and asking questions. Um, I, I can't say, and I wouldn't work in admissions if I didn't love this place so much. And I've, I've been here for a very long time. Um, and it's a, it's a very special place. And um, I don't think any one of you will regret, ever regret sending your student here. I, I promise you. So and I'm gonna add that Lou is a super coach. I mean, she's, she's an amazing crew coach for, for St. Andrew, so. That's Thank you. I <laughs> That's why I have my very, my voice. This is my springtime voice. <laughs> So, all right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everyone.